Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel for Wednesday's video. If you are new here, I film a vlog every weekend and on Wednesday we do one specific DIY or at least one topic. It could be a plan with me, it could be cooking, it could be a what I eat in the day, a morning routine, anything like that. It's a what's up Wednesday. If you like DIYs and all of the things, make sure you're not only subscribed here on my YouTube channel, but also following me over on Instagram because I do some specific Instagram stories and I save them in highlights with additional DIYs, cooking, literally all the things. If you caught last weekend's vlog, which I will leave linked down below, I constructed a new console table for my hallway upstairs. However, I needed a large piece of art. After hopping online and looking, Studio McGee being one of my favorite places, I knew I wanted a really textured painting. I know you've all seen them. I'll put some up on the screen. There's more modern paintings that are typically solid in color, but they have all of that amazing texture. When looking into it, I realized there were so many suggestions, mixing cornstarch with your paint, mixing baking soda with your paint, all sorts of concoctions you could create texture with. After thinking about it, I realized I could get lightweight joint compound, feel like I have a lot more control over it, and then paint over the joint compound. When looking at these paintings, they ranged in price from $600 and up. I wasn't willing to pay that, but I knew I had a canvas down in my basement that I no longer use, that's already framed off, that I can make work for the space. And that's exactly what we're going to do. If you don't have a canvas lying around, which I bet some of you do, you could pick one of these up at a really reasonable cost at Home Goods based off of the size that you need. But my favorite place to find old canvases is Goodwill. In their home section, they always have old pieces of framed art. It's my favorite place to go for brass accessories, old canvases and picture frames. So hit up your Goodwill and then you could literally create the same thing for a fraction of the cost. The joint compound was around three to $5. I'm using house paint that I already have on hand and an old canvas. So I'm getting away with making this piece of art for less than $10. I'm excited. Let's go ahead and dive in to how we do it. So for this art project, you only need a handful of things. I have this old canvas that I love. I still love the picture. It just doesn't go with the house anymore. So I'm gonna recycle this canvas. You could find this at Goodwill. You could pick one up in clearance at Home Goods or TJ Maxx, somewhere like that. So this one was down in my basement. It's better for it to be back up on a wall and being used. The next thing you need to pick up, which is only a couple dollars, they range anywhere from three to eight dollars, depending on what size you get, is joint compound. I'm using dry decks because it goes on purple and dries white and I wanna really know when it's all dry. You don't have to stir it, you just open it up and start using it. And then you need some tools. I literally just rated what I had. So we have some spackling knives and trowel. And then I have this old blade that you use to like smooth down wallpaper. I have like eight of them, so I'm using one of those. Then some uh, cardboard that I just tore because it'll add texture. And then on these pieces of cardboard, I actually cut to create lines similar to what we saw in that piece at McGee & Co. We're going to just start getting a layer of spackle on it. And for that, I'm going to use the spackling knife and most likely the trowel. To get this started, I'm literally just going to take some and then start smearing it on. I'll probably use the trowel to get it on. Now, I'm not worried about covering up the whole painting only because I'm going to end up painting all of this when we're when all is said and done. So right now is just about getting this smeared on like icing a cake. And every once in a while, I'm just going to scrape off my excess. I'm gonna use this to get a little bit closer to edges. I'm probably going to use probably this whole container of joint compound. Don't want any huge chunks near edges. So I'm trying to use this knife to make sure that 
near edges of the canvas are smooth because I know I don't want right, I'm gonna flip this just to work on the other side and I'm gonna grab a butter knife because I don't like that just to clean up that edge all right you can see that I have the joint compound spread all over the canvas, which I'm really happy with it. I'll clean up the edges right before I move on. If we look at this picture, there are like big swoops in the middle and then just some like randomness. So I wanna get those three big swoops and then we'll keep going. To get that randomness, I'm just gonna go in a couple different directions, smoothing this out as we go. I'm just using the flat end. All right, so this bottom one seems a little thinner. I'm actually gonna just tear this in half. I'm just going to see what happens. And then I'm thinking for this one. I'm gonna use this piece. And I like. It's not easy to see right now, but I have like three like really clear like little swoops happening. I'm just gonna let this all dry and then we're gonna paint it. And it's gonna be really simple. Just have fun, that's it, just have fun. It took two full days to actually dry, but it looks really good. I thought originally that I was going to teach you guys how to do like an ombre paint effect, but the more I look at the inspirations that I have, they're all a singular color, and I think that's what I wanna go to. So I'm gonna be using Floral White by Benjamin Moore to simply paint this all one solid creamy color because I want all of the dimension to come from the texture. But look how beautiful that lightweight joint compound dried. I am so happy with this and I think it's gonna be beautiful when it's done. All right, friends, the first coat of Floral White is on the canvas. And what I'm realizing is it's only going to take one coat to cover it all. It looks stunning and far more expensive than what we paid. What I love is that I am getting some dimension because the joint compound dried a little darker than this floral white. I think I wanna add one other little dimension into it. So I'm letting some of that come through, but I'm also going to add a little bit of highlighting with a really dry brush with Simply White by Benjamin Moore. Now you actually think I'm gonna layer this in. You can see the difference in color. And I'm just going to dry brush this brighter white in this top corner, just to add a little depth of color. And then just feather it down. And you could do this with any color, but it's going to be really subtle and I'm gonna intensify it near the top. And then once I have the intensity of that, I'm gonna go back in with my floral white and bring it down into the rest of the painting, leaving the most intense white at the top. Like I said, subtle difference, but it will add a really nice highlight to everything. I wish the lighting was better, but you can really tell how it looks a lot more intense white and then goes into more of a creamy base. And I let, a, you could see it here a little bit. And I let a little bit more of that darker joint compound come through. Now I'm just gonna let this dry. Then we will hang it and show it off. But for literally a fraction of the cost, like I said, I had the paint on hand. You could use whatever paints you have. For $3 of joint compound in an old canvas, these sell on McGee Co. for anywhere $600 and above especially one for this size. It's an easy, easy DIY and you really can't mess it up. 
All right, friends, while we're at it, I thought I'd show you the easiest way to hang a picture. So I tore off a piece of tape, the length of my two brackets. I'm gonna put this up on the wall using my level and then tap in my nails. And that way it's perfectly spaced, it's perfectly level and it's a breeze. So I have my tape leveled on the wall. I tapped my nails on both sides. I know it's all set to go. So now I can pull my tape off and hang my painting and it took seconds. The picture is perfectly level. My tip works every time. And now looking at it in this space, I love it. It looks so good. I love how the hue of the frame catches that mirror and it finishes off that area beautifully. Simple DIY, easy, easy peasy. I hope that you guys walk away with a really quick and easy tip that you can customize a piece of art for your home. If you like this kind of video, quick DIYs, and you also like vlogs with bigger DIYs often in them, make sure to click subscribe. Make sure you follow me not only here, but over on Instagram. And lastly, I will leave this video like I leave all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is free, give it to everyone. Until next time, which will be soon, my friends. Bye-bye.